Today's video is about a boat. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Yes, Canadians say about differently than Americans. Haha, <laughs> funny jokes. But the problem is you guys get the joke wrong every single time. While Canadians definitely say it differently, and we say it a vast variety of different ways depending on what part of the country we're from, none of us, not a single region, says a boot. You got the joke wrong. We say a boat. A boat, a boat, a boat, a boat, a boot, but nobody says a boot. Anyways, today's video is about a boat. My current game is taking place in a seaside town. Now, I don't necessarily know that I need a little rowboat, but it's something that's been on my to-do list for such a long time, I figured now would be the appropriate time to finally make one. This is also a great beginner project if you're just starting out because it's pretty small and self-contained and doesn't have a lot of fancy techniques involved. And if you're an experienced crafter, this might also be something that's just simply not on your list of things that you've done. So now might be the time. We're gonna make this out of foam. And I have been thinking long and hard about which foam to use. I could use Dollar Tree Foam Core. The advantage here is that it's really cheap and widely available, at least in North America. It's already a thickness that is perfect for this project. You can peel the paper off, do the wood grain, all that, cut it with a knife, no special tools. This is actually the most approachable material to use. The downside is that it doesn't take the design texturing quite as well as the Styroder, which I think is what I'm going to use. This is an XPS insulation foam. Specifically, it's a brand that is made in Germany. And the advantage with this is that of all the foams I've used, this takes impressions the best and it will be the easiest to get a nice wood plank and wood grain on it. The downside is that obviously I can't buy it in North America and many of you won't be able to as well. It will require special tools like my hot wire table to mill it up, but it'll let me do the detail that I want on it. The in-between would be XPS insulation foam by a North American company like Dow or Foamular. At the end of the day, you can make this out of any of them. I think that the Styrodur is gonna give me the nicest finished product, but with some extra effort required to do so. So that's what I'm gonna do. Step one is gonna be milling this down into a few different thicknesses. I need one strip that, I don't know, is gonna be maybe three eighths of an inch or something thick for the base of the boat. And then I'm gonna make some that are probably around three sixteenths of an inch, similar to the foam core for the side walls. For the actual shape, I think I'm going to cut out a piece of construction paper and create a jig and then that way I can test different shapes and sizes before moving on to the real thing. So let's mill up some foam. It's really important to me that this boat is playable and usable in game. This isn't a four diorama. This isn't a scale model. This is something that miniatures are actually gonna get used on. So I'm gonna make sure that at least 
five models can fit on this thing comfortably and possibly more if I really wanted to. Let's call it two and a half. Now I need to fold this in half so that I can get a symmetrical layout for the, for the peak of this little dinghy boat here. And there is our little boat shape. Everybody's gonna fit in there nicely. I actually think it might sell this a bit better if I curve in the back a little bit. So make it a little bit harder when it comes to putting on the sides, but I think it'll look nice. Make it look a little less static. Now I have my material for the base. I'm just gonna use this to cut it out. And I tried something here that I don't know if it's gonna work. I actually tapered this cut so that the bottom was smaller than the top. And the reason for this is that I want the sides to kind of flare out a little bit. It doesn't really make sense if they're just standing upright and totally 90 degrees. So hopefully this works. Looks pretty decent. Now I need the sides. Go back to my construction paper here. Don't want this to be too tall. Using a mini for reference, one inch is a nice size. Now this is what's nice about using the construction paper first is that I can kind of just work with this and bend it and get it the shape I want before cutting out the actual foam pieces. Because of this curve compounded with this curve, this doesn't really want to wrap around nicely. It's going to overlap the bottom here and I'll have to flush cut that off. So this is a little bit awkward, but I think it's actually going to work out well in my favor. Actually, the foam bends quite nicely to the to the base, a little bit easier than the paper did in a weird way. Before I assemble these three pieces, I'm going to create a wood shiplap pattern on this foam. I just made a really dumb mistake doing this shiplap. So this is one piece that will curve in around. This is the inside of the boat and this is the outside of the boat. And I don't know if you can tell, but I made the direction of the shiplap upside down on this one. I gotta make it again, because it looks really stupid. It's not super noticeable, but it is a dumb mistake where these are angled up instead of down. I'm gonna remake this piece and glue it to the boat, and then I'm just gonna quickly make a back and throw that on as well. I decided to just use that screwed up piece for the back because you can't really tell on the inside that they're upside down. So I just glued it in place, cut off the excess flush with the sides. And I've been using hot glue to assemble this thing. There's a good argument for using PVA glue instead because it's a lot stronger and a lot cleaner. The hot glue is certainly a lot faster. Now that I flush cut this off, it's just a matter of using a little knife to join the two seam lines and continue the wood grain. Taking the time to add these little details is what makes a really simple 
bit of foam woodwork look a lot more believable. Two problems I gotta deal with now. One is that I forgot to texture the inside with wood grain before putting on the sides. I definitely should have drawn planks on this first. I'm gonna have to do it now and it's gonna be a lot harder. And also is the peak here. This hasn't worked out quite as well as I would have hoped. Crappy looking to be honest. And somehow one side ended up a lot taller than the other. Not sure the best thing to do here. I think I'm gonna cut a little block and make a front piece to fill this in. I think that's why this one looked taller is it just actually projected further. It was longer. So now I got them at about an even place. And I got this little block here, just freehanding everything to make it fit. It actually looks too thick, so I'm just gonna freehand cut this down so it looks like a narrower plank. The nice thing about doing old-fashioned style woodwork pieces like this is that it's really forgiving and you can really lean on that hand-hewn wood look and get away with quite a bit of error. And actually, you can accentuate it as well. It's pretty good. Now just some wood grain. Quite like how that turned out, actually. Now just some planks in here. I'm considering this finished in terms of sculpting. Some people will be inclined to add paddles. It really doesn't serve a mechanical purpose and this isn't a display piece, this is a game aid for mechanics. And I think paddles might just get in the way. What I do wanna do is protect this a little bit in the bottom. This is a pretty fragile little piece. It's only foam and it is starting to kind of curl and bow a little bit from the assembly. Originally, I was just gonna put a piece of construction paper on the bottom to kind of protect the foam, but I don't think that'll be enough. So instead, I'm gonna use some medium weight chipboard. This is just that really, really heavy cardstock that's pretty thick, a couple millimeters. And I'm gonna glue this onto it, cut it off, and it will serve as a nice rigid hard bottom and hopefully stop some of that warping, curving. It doesn't really matter if it's warped a little bit, but if I can fix it, I can fix it. That worked pretty good. Straightened the thing out, made it more durable and added a nice bit of weight. Now all I gotta do is paint this thing up. It's gonna be really simple, just a light brown, a wash and a little bit of dry brushing probably. First I'm gonna coat it. Whoa, mm, easy there big fella. I'm gonna coat it in Mod Podge that I've pre-mixed with black paint. This will seal the foam, harden it up a little bit and you know, add a little bit more adhesion to the joints and it will act as my base coat primer with this black in it.
And that, my friends, is how you can make a very simple and very usable in-game little boat out of foam. And again, you can make it out of any kind of foam. If you only have foam core, you can absolutely bang out this project, no, no problem. Do it with foam core, it's all you need. Now, I didn't embellish this in any way. I didn't add any little hooks to hold the paddles. I didn't make any paddles. I could have made a little coiled up rope. I could have put some fisherman's net. And I really love doing those sorts of details on builds because they make simple things look way nicer than they actually are. But I didn't here. And that's because I'm choosing functionality over everything else. I want to use this as a prop in game and I want to be able to place minis in as many ways as I possibly can. I want to be able to put things in it like uh, treasure chest or, or maybe I want to put some crates and barrels or whatever in there. Any little added detail I might put on this thing like a coil of rope is going to impede me from using this thing in these sorts of ways. So this time around, I'm choosing function over form. That's the right way to say it, I think, yeah. If you wanna really decorate something like this, and you can, and you wanna build things like paddles, keep in mind there is gonna be an issue of scale. This boat is kind of oversized and exaggerated as compared to 28 millimeter minis so that it can function and fit all their weapons and bases and crap inside it. If you make paddles, you have to make a decision. Do you make them in scale with the boat or the minis? If you make them in scale with the minis, they're gonna look kind of small as compared to the actual boat. If you make them in scale to the boat, well, they're gonna be huge in comparison to the mini. So that's one thing you might have to fight with and make a decision on. But don't let it stop you if you really want paddles. This one I made in a couple hours, most of which was drying time. You could easily assembly line out four or five of these in an afternoon or you know a day off from work, whatever. And then you got these sweet boats to use. These are the kind of things that players really really like seriously they're gonna get so much joy cruising around in this in this little boat and it looks great on top of whatever battle mat you might have and i know some of you are gonna ask where this battle mat came from it was a gift from my friend danny from 3d printed tabletop it was from a kickstarter i don't know much about it this isn't like a sponsored thing but i will put a link to it in the video description because i know people are gonna ask they asked when i showed pictures of it I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. I consider this a great beginner project. If there's other little things like this you'd like to see me tackle, give me some suggestions. I'd love to hear them. Boats is one of those things that was suggested a bunch of times in the past. So finally, I can cross that one off the list. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own hobby needs, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I put a lot of time into listing all the stuff that I use regularly, explaining what it is, why I use it, and linking to those products so that you can be sure you're buying the right thing because it can be really confusing, especially if you're new in the hobby. And if you enjoy these videos that I make, and you want to help me keep making them, you can do so by supporting the channel on Patreon. It's through that support that I'm able to dedicate the time and effort and equipment needed to make these videos. The bonus to you is that you get to join the Black Magic Craft Fellowship, which is a group full of like-minded, awesome, super cool, inspirational, and helpful people who share their love and interest in this hobby. So consider taking a look. That's it for this week, guys. I'll see you again next week. Cheers. Man overboard! Oh, no. He's a goner. Let him die. I'll take his gold. <laughs> uh.